So we're here for what will be ride number lucky 13 on this Colt. Uh, we just did a little segment on him showing some steering. And I realized in that segment, something I didn't deal with, but it was on my agenda for another segment, was introducing the leg, getting your horse more active and alive off your leg. When they're real green like this Colt, I don't incorporate my leg in an insistent way. I just gradually bring it into play. And I'll supplement it with a rein if I need to. So I'll even, if I want to steer to the left, I might tap him a little bit on the left or the right shoulder to move him over and introduce my leg kind of gradually. The same thing holds true for using your leg when you go forward. I'm going to put my leg on him. And right now, he's just dead in the water, so I'll wake him up. And he's doing his favorite thing there coming in, so I'll turn him back to the inside. Or to the outside, reminding him to get over on the fence. But let's just see what happens if I put a leg on him now. Still a little pokey but not like the last time. So you supplement the leg with the rein instead of just kicking and kicking and kicking. So I doubled him back against the fence because he was pulling in again. And that's something that he does, especially when he's been standing a little bit, which we were, he sort of reverts to that. So. You don't want to just kick and kick and kick. You could make the argument that, well, kick a little, then kick harder, then kick harder. But there's a real risk that you desensitize your horse to your legs. So I'd rather take a nice little pressure with my leg, give them a chance, and if they don't go, light them up. But you can see how much less it takes. And then if we transition back, to a walk and do it again. Took him a couple strides, but he got it. And that's, that's uh, encouraging. Now, I have a kind of a very basic, somewhat primitive way that I introduce more leg pressure. And that is, I just call it the leg bump. I'll take my colt along the fence, leave plenty of room, tip their nose into the fence, and when I get to the apex of that turn, I drive them out. Now there, he was pretty dull. And I'll introduce this at the walk, but I like to leave it at trot. So I'll come over here, tip his nose, bump, bump, there. I'm not pretending that this is a rollback. It's just get away from my leg. And it builds a little bit of responsiveness to your leg in a turn, and a whole lot of just responsiveness to your leg one leg at a time. So tip him, bump. And then if they get a little bit better at it, you can begin to do it from a trot. And that's awkward, and it's green, but that's exactly what I'd expect, and that's why I'm doing it. If it was perfect, he'd probably be proven to me I didn't need to do it in the first place. So I'm gonna tip his nose. There, more response. I don't wanna get in his way, so I'll get him out here where he's got room, tip his nose go on through. So I'm using my outside leg. If I'm turning to the left, I'm going to use my right leg. When I leave, I might use both legs, but when I turn, I'm using the right leg. And what you'll find is, after you do that a little bit, You should be able to put a leg on him 
and you can see he's more responsive than he was at the beginning of the session. It also begins to build that all-important on-off switch to where you notch him up a little bit, you ask him to do something that's a little higher degree of difficulty, and then you bring him back down. Now he's getting good enough at steering, I'll even cheat a little bit and see, can you come across the center and one hand him. Whoa. Now, that was premature, but it's a good way to take your horse's temperature to something maybe they're not completely ready for in terms of where you are, but see how they react. And when they come through for you, it tells you that you're ready to build toward that. So that's the leg bump. Use it judiciously, you'll get your horse moving off your leg, steering a little bit better, a bit more responsive when you put a leg on him. I find it's a real good, simple way teaching your horse to be more responsive and then to come back down and be calm again. If this colt was like this, I'd spend whatever time it took to relax him to where, you know, I, I, I just sing him to sleep until he was quiet. But you can see that's not an issue with him. He's an interesting colt because when I flop my hands together, he noticed. I like that. He's alert, but he's relaxed. Good for him. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you folks. Come back and see us next time.